everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to make this ginormous Hattie blanket. The Hattie is made of four panels um, using single crochet stitches in the front loop only, and then we're going to seam those four panels together, add a border, and then add our own giant chunky tassels to each corner. Um, the Hattie is huge. It's about a queen size blanket, but it's super soft, super snuggly, and you can make it in so many beautiful colors. We're gonna use Lime Brand's Pound of Love. Um, I'm sure that it will become a household favorite like it is in mine. So let's go ahead and start making heavy. Okay, so for this tutorial, we are using Lime Brand's Pound of Love in the color Quartz. It's a category four medium weight yarn. Um, and I'm also using an eye crochet hook, which is a five and a half millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my starting yarn and I'll show you how to get started on your first panel. Okay, so this blanket is made in four panels and all four panels are made exactly the same. So they're made on the bias, which means we're gonna be working from one corner, increasing on both sides, and then we're gonna do um, one section that's like straight where we're going to decrease on one side increase on the other and then we're going to decrease on both sides so um i'll show you each step as we go we're going to start by making a slip knot on our hook and we are going to chain two and then working in the front loop only here and throughout so this first one can be a little bit tricky getting it into the front loop of our chain stitch, but working in the second chain from the hook and going into the front loop only, we are going to single crochet two. Okay, then we're gonna chain one. Our chain ones do not count as a stitch turn and again we're always going to be working in the front loop only so here's our stitch we've got our back loop front loop back loop front loop so going into the front loop we're going to single crochet two in both stitches so we'll be increasing by two each row so we started with two stitches now we have four chain one turn and again, working in the front loop only, we're going to single crochet two, and then we're going to work a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And in the last stitch, we're going to increase again by working two single crochet. Okay, so in this row, we'll have six stitches, and then we're going to chain one, turn again, and we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. Again, always working in the front loop only. Single crochet in each stitch across until our last stitch. And then in our last stitch, we're going to work two single crochet. So you can kind of start to see our right angle here. And we're just going to continue working in that same pattern. So two single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet into each stitch across. Again, always working in the front loop. And then when we get to our last stitch, we're gonna increase again and work two single crochet into the last stitch. So again, we're gonna be increasing by two stitches each row as we go. And the more you go, you'll get to see our front loops. Well, our unworked back loops is what you'll be seeing. We're gonna see these like diagonal lines going. And this is our increase section. So we're always going to be increasing at the beginning and end of each row. And we're gonna work a total of 75 rows, which means that you should have 150 stitches at the end of your increase section. Okay, 
Now I've reached the last stitch, so I'm going to work two single crochet in the last stitch, chain one turn, and we'll just continue on doing the same, the same pattern as we've been doing. So work every row, you chain one turn, always in the front loop only, increase at the beginning and increase at the end. You'll work 75 rows total for a total of 150 stitches. And then once we're done with that, I'll meet you back here and show you how to do the straight section. Okay, so once you have finished the first section um, of your panel, and again, this is just one of four panels we will be making. So each panel will start with this increased section where you're increasing on both ends. Um, you will have 150 stitches, and this will be your long side of your panel. Um, you may notice some curling, don't worry about that. We will take that care of that at the end when we're all finished. But I wanted to show you kind of what it will look like at this point. Next, we will be doing a straight section where we will be decreasing along this edge while still increasing along this edge. And I will show you that two row repeat right now. Okay, so for our next section, which is our straight section, like I said, right here is like the bottom edge of our panel. Um, and we've got our diagonal going this way where we're working. These are our active row stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to be decreasing and we'll start seeing um, a straight edge coming right here from this corner going up as we work our stitches. And on the other edge over here, this is going to continue. We're still going to increase on this side. So this will continue to get taller and taller. And this is how we create a rectangle versus a square. So our panels are going to be rectangles. So it's super simple to do this. It's just a two row repeat. So I've already chained one and you're going to start the first row of the straight section by doing a single crochet two together just like that. I'll do it one more time. So you can see to do a single crochet two together. Again, we're always working into the front loops only. We're gonna insert our hook into the first loop, yarn over, drop a loop, just like we would for a regular single crochet. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So we've decreased by one stitch. Then we're just going to continue to single crochet in the front loop only of each stitch all the way across until we have one stitch left. Okay, so here we are at our last two stitches. I'm gonna single crochet until I have one stitch left. And then as before with our increased rows, I'm going to single crochet two into the last stitch. So again, like I said, we're gonna to continue to increase on this side, but we're going to start decreasing on the other side. So that's our first row of our straight section. We're going to chain one and turn. And then this time, since again, we want to keep increasing on this side, I'm going to single crochet two into the first stitch so that this edge continues to get taller. And then I'm going to single crochet again, always into the front loop all the way across until I have two stitches left. Okay, so we've reached the end of our second row of our straight section and we've got two stitches left. So again, since this is a corner here and we want this edge to continue to go straight across, we are going to do a single crochet two together over the last two stitches. And you can see here is our corner and it's going to continue to go straight across this way. 
So then we're just going to repeat those two rows five more times. So we have a total of 12 rows for our straight section. So again, we're gonna chain one and turn. And since we are, this is our decrease side, we're gonna start our next row one re repeat with single crochet two together and then single crochet in the front loop only all the way across until we have one stitch remaining and we'll increase on that side. So just continue to repeat those two rows, making sure that you're always decreasing at the beginning and end on this side and increasing at the beginning and end on this side. And I'll show you what that will look like when you're all done with your straight section. Okay, so we just finished the straight section. So you'll see here, this was our decrease side. Here's our bottom edge of our panel. And then this is where we're working along the diagonal and it goes all the way up. This was our increase side. So we've gotten the height of our rectangle that we want. And we've got this first corner we've just made down here and this straight side. So from here, we're gonna work our decrease section where we're gonna go ahead and single crochet two together, both at the beginning and end of every row. And then we'll start to see this edge kind of go straight across and we'll end up meeting at the corner up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to work your decrease rows for your decrease section. Okay. So we're gonna start our decrease section on this side where we've already started decreasing. Um, so we've got our 12 rows for the straight section. And now we're gonna start our decrease section. So just how we always have been doing on this side, we're gonna start by chaining one, and then we're going to work a single crochet two together, always in the front loops only. And then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across until we have two stitches left. Okay, so now we have two stitches left and we've reached, this is going to be our next corner that we'll be creating. So we're going to end the row by single crocheting two together. And that's gonna make this end start coming straight across this way. And we're just going to repeat that row over and over again. So remember to chain one and then we're going to turn and from here on out, every row will start with a single crochet two together and end with a single crochet two together. So we're going to be decreasing each row by two stitches. And this is gonna make our sides build up and finish out our rectangle. So here you can see this edge, here's our corner. We're gonna be going straight across this way to finish up our panel. So after a few rows, it will look a lot like this. So it's gonna look like this. This was our bottom corner where we started our straight section and you can see that we've continued to decrease up this side. And here's our working row and this is the other corner where we kept increasing on this side for the straight section. And now that we're decreasing at both ends, it's coming straight across. So we're just gonna continue to decrease at the beginning and end of each row until we get all the way to this corner over here. Okay, so here you can see I've gotten to the end and I'm about to do the last two rows of the panel. So I've already chained one. And since we only have four stitches left in this row, we are going to single crochet two together twice. So there's one and two, chain one and turn. And our last row of the panel will just be one single crochet two together. Just like this. And that will complete your panel. 
After this, um, you're welcome just to fasten off and weave in the end. Um, if you want to stay attached here, we will be single crocheting all the way around, um, but I prefer to fasten off here and then restart when I do single crochet around. So finish all four of your panels and then we'll be ready to single crochet around each one. To single crochet around each panel, um, it's just gonna give us a nice clean spot to seam. So we're gonna be going all the way around our panels and I like to join just on the side, anywhere along the side, kind of close to the corner. And we're going to be single crocheting into each end of each row. So I'm going to attach and chain one and then single crochet into my same spot where I joined. And then I'm going to single crochet into the side of each row, so the end of each row. Um, so if you look closely, you can see kind of where I will put my stitches. I put them in the same spot for every row. So right here, um, I'll fit them into this part along the edge, and then there'll be like a definite little loop right there for the next one. Um, just try to make sure that you're counting out so that you have the same number across the short side as well as across the long side. And then when we get to the corner, we are going to work three single crochet into the corner of each panel. So here's one, two, and three. And then we'll just continue to single crochet along the edge, working one single crochet into the end of each row. So along the short edges, you should have 74 stitches, not including the corner stitches. And along the long edge, you should have 86 stitches, again, not including the corner stitches. So try to keep that consistent among all four panels. And once you have single crocheted around every single panel, um, you'll be ready for seaming. Okay, so if I lay it down here, you can see that we're getting a nice, clean, crisp edge to our panels. Um, and it will be a lot easier to seam once you have those all those single crochets in place. So just make sure that you're always working into each edge only doing one single crochet and working three single crochet into every corner. And when you're all the way back around, go ahead and join to your first stitch. Okay, so here you can see I have all four of my panels done. I have single crocheted around each one. And this is how they will kind of like line up in the center. You wanna to try to get these lines going as close together, as close to lined up as possible. Um, so now I'm going to start seaming. I'm gonna seam the short ends on both pieces together first, and then we'll seam the long ends here to make one giant blanket. And I'll show you how that's done. Okay, so here I have two panels with the shorter sides um, right up next to each other with the right sides facing up. Um, and you can see here are my corner stitches. That's where we're gonna start. And I like to use the mattress stitch to seam, but you can use whichever seaming method you prefer. Um, it just kind of depends on what look you're going for for your blanket. Um, you could do mattress stitch like me, whip stitch. You could even use a crochet hook and do the slip stitch method where you'll see slip stitches along the top of your blanket. But I've got a long piece of yarn thread it on to my blunt tapestry needle. And for mattress stitch, I'm gonna start here in the corner stitch. So how we have three single crochets into each corner. I'm gonna start by going basically bottom up through both stitches, or both loops, I guess I should say, on one end. And then again, bottom up through one, two, three, the center one of the corner and pull it through. And then we're just going to zigzag back and forth, lining up our single crochet stitches. So always going from the bottom up 
or I guess inside out. And just weaving back and forth from one side to the other. Okay, so here you can see that we're just pulling those seams together, those edges together in almost like an easy seamless seam, um, almost invisible seam. So I'm just gonna continue on going all the way. And when I get to the other edge, I'm again going to go through these corner stitches. And I'm gonna repeat that with the next two panels as well, seaming the short ends together. Um, and then we'll go ahead and seam the long edge edges together in the middle, again, making sure that we keep these lines together as close as possible so that we'll get that diamond shape in the middle of our blanket. So go ahead and seam the short ends of your blankets to blanket panels together. And then you can go ahead and seam the long ends together, making sure to kind of join in the center where all four panels come together as you go down this long seam. And when we're done with that, I'll let you know what to do next. Okay, so now that we have our blanket all seamed together, you're gonna wanna start your border. I like to start, kind of, I'll start close to a corner. Um, that way my join is kind of like, I don't know, down towards the bottom of the blanket. Um, but we're going to be using more of our yarn and sticking with our, um, I hook our five and a half millimeter hook. We are going to join our yarn to any stitch close to one of the corners with the right side of the blanket facing up. So I'm just going to join my yarn here, chain one and we're ready to go. And we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around, but we're going to be working three single crochets into the corner stitch, which I'll show you in just a second. So we're just gonna be adding a thicker, pretty simple single crochet border. So here you can see are my three stitches that made up the corner when I initially single crocheted around this panel. So going into that center stitch, this is the stitch we're going to single crochet three into. So one, two, three. And that's gonna whoop, keep our corner right there. So the next time I go around, I'm going to, here's my one, two, three in this center stitch here. That's where I'm gonna work three single crochet. So then going back down our next side, I'm just gonna continue to work single crochets into each stitch. And so since we already have single crocheted around our panels, it should be relatively easy to just simply add a thick single crochet border to your blanket. It just might take a while because this is a rather large blanket. So it might take a while to get around, but we're gonna go ahead and single crochet around. Um, and you can do this as many times as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and make my border about two to three inches wide. So um, I'm gonna finish that and then I'll let you know exactly how many rows you'll need. But each time you're going to join into your first stitch, chain one and keep going. Um, again, always working three single crochets into the corner. Okay, so I've now gone around the blanket six times total. So I've got six rounds for my border. Um, you are welcome to do more rounds than that if you want. If you want a thicker border, you can do less rounds if you want a thinner border. But right now I think six looks good for me. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, I didn't join my last round here. Um, I'm gonna do an invisible join. So I'm just going to put my arm, fasten it off, pull that last one through. And then using my tapestry needle, going to do the invisible join. So here is my first stitch of that round. So I'm gonna go into the second one, going through both loops, pull it through. And then I'm gonna go back down through the center of my last stitch. And then I also kind of like to go kind of into this side of the beginning stitch just like that. So we're kind of making our own little stitch on top of the first stitch of the row so that it's a more smooth, even um, join than if we were just to slip stitch that. So now I have completed the border. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in these two ends from where I did the border. And if you have any additional ends not woven in yet, go ahead and weave those in as well. And then I'll show you how to add big chunky tassels to the corners of your blanket. Okay, so to make our tassels, I'm just using this needle case as my tassel, I guess, maker. Um, they also make tassel makers, or you can use a piece of cardboard. I recommend having it be about six to seven inches tall, whatever you're gonna wrap the yarn around. And then we're just going to start, I'm gonna kind of go towards the end of my case to make it easier for myself. Um, but you're just going to wrap the yarn around. Try to stay somewhat loose with this. Oops, get stuck on the zipper. Let me turn it this way. Um, Cause you don't want it to get too tight around there. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of difficult to get off of your tassel area or tassel maker. Um, and then after a couple wraps, Again, since we're making a super chunky one, I'm not keeping exact count of how many times to wrap around. I'm gonna guess we're gonna do about 75 to 100 times total. But after I've gotten it wrapped around a few times here and it's pretty solid, what I like to do, I kind of push it together, is I'm gonna do a small bead of hot glue right at the top. Um, and this will help keep the strands in place if my <laughs> glue gun will actually work for me today. Um, so we're just going to, oh my goodness. Here we go, getting some out now. Just a small little bit of hot glue. And then so once we have that on there, we're gonna to continue to wrap around so that we cover the strand while it's still warm. Um, and that just kind of helps secure the strands so that they are less likely to fall out of the tassel when you're done. And I know this is like really hard to show on video, <laughs> um, but here you can see I'm going back around the glue that I just put on just to make sure that it's fully secure. So I'm gonna continue wrapping and then I'll show you what to do next. So I've gotten it wrapped around, all the hot glue is covered up and I've cut down here to stop, to be the end of my tassel. So now I'm gonna cut just a really long piece of yarn. And then I like to use a tapestry needle to help with this part. I'm just gonna thread that onto a tapestry needle and then slide it all the way under all of the strands of yarn here and then bring it up to the top. That's going to be how we secure our tassel. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this off, making sure to keep our long piece of yarn up here. And then we just slide our wrapped yarn off of our case, just like that. Okay, so I've taken my wrapped yarn off of my little case thing um, and I've got that long piece that's underneath all the loops at the top this is where like a little strand of hot glue is so I'm just gonna tie this really tight so that I know that it's secure and my tassel's not gonna come apart again this can be kind of tricky I try to keep mine as tight as possible 
Um, but know that that can be challenging when you have a bunch of yarn you're trying to tie together. So um, once I know that that's nice and secure, I'm gonna kind of flatten down my tassel as best I can. And then we're gonna take another long strand of yarn and put that underneath our wrapped yarn. And about like an inch or so, maybe a little more down the tassel, we're gonna tie this around. So however tall or thick you want the top part of your tassel to be, you'll wanna tie your yarn around as tight as possible here. Let me knot that up. Okay, and then we can um, like to kind of like wrap the yarn around a couple times. So I'll cross it and then I'll usually just hold one towards the back and take the other one and wrap it around a couple more times. Just like this, I'll keep all the strands laying as flat as possible. And then we're gonna tie one more time so that it's extra secure. Okay, and then we can just kind of leave those hanging into the tassel. Um, sometimes I also will take a little crochet hook and go up and then pull them down through the wrapped section. So totally up to you, however you want your tassels to be. And then all we have to do now is we're going to cut all of these loops here and then we're gonna trim our tassel. And since we're making big chunky tassels, there's gonna be a lot of loops to get through. So feel free to take your time with this. Um, and again, we are going to be trimming it up. So if they're not all exactly the same length, that's okay. Try to get all the way through all the loops. I think I got them all. Looks like it. Okay, so now we just need to trim it. And since I already have a finished one here, I wanna trim them to about the same length. I want all four of my tassels to be as similar as possible. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll cut these off, trim them up, but this is what your finished tassel will look like. And then you can use these ends up here at the top to tie it onto each end of your blanket. Um, I usually tie them on, um, you know, do a double knot, and then I'll actually weave these ends of the tassel into part of the blanket to secure it. Um, if you are wanting to make your pom or not your pom poms, your tassels removable, um, I know it's been suggested to me before. You can maybe sew like a little snap onto the end and then one onto the blanket and make them removable. Um, so it kind of depends on who is receiving the blanket and if they plan on using it in a washing machine. Um, I do recommend having a way to remove the tassels just because sometimes in the wash they can get a little bit distorted um, or some of the strands may start falling out. So once you have attached all of your tassels, you will be done with your Hattie blanket. You can find a link to the free pattern in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.